Hi, I'm Robert here at Render, and in this video we'll show you how to set up your optic and walk you through a few getting started procedures. The first thing you'll want to do is unclasp the cutting mat by grabbing the side or corner and pull to release the cutting mat which is attached to the lower body with magnets and lay the mat flat on the table or surface you are working on. Grabbing the two ends of the upper body by the handles, rotate it 90 degrees clockwise until the upper body is perpendicular to the lower body. Gently lower the upper body down so it sits on the lower hinge plate and support leg. Press down slightly to make sure the hinge plate pins are seated all the way. Now before we start plugging everything in, let's take a quick look at the components and parts of the optic. The optic comes with a 12 by 18 inch cutting mat with a grid layout that perfectly matches the work area in the application light burn. If you wish to cut or engrave on the surface of a material, you can remove the cutting mat by supporting the mat down and lifting the optic up to release the lower body from the magnetic snaps that hold it in place. The optic rides along the Y-axis with the use of its support leg, which is stored in the upper body, and extends out when it clears the lower body. The support leg is also used in leveling the optic, which you can do so by using your height gauge. Place the lowest setting of your height gauge under or beside the upper body and using the provided hex key, adjust the height of the leg at the top of the upper body by rotating the screw clockwise or counterclockwise so it sits comfortably on the top of your height gauge. Your optic will come with a laser safety shield which is held in place by magnetic snaps. To release the safety shield, reach under and pull the bottom out and vice versa when placing it back in. The safety shield when in place, triggers the safety switch, allowing the laser module to fire. If the safety trigger is not engaged all the way, a flashing orange light will appear on the power button along with an alarm to notify you the shield is not fully in place. Within the X-axis housing, we have the optics X-axis carriage backplate, belt, and laser module cable. To install the laser module, attach it so the cable coming out of the magnetic connector is pointed towards you. Lift the cam lever and place the corner dovetail of your laser module against the back plate so it sits flat. Lower the cam lever to lock the module in place. Always remember to plug in and unplug the module before connecting or disconnecting power to the optic itself. Now we need to plug power into the optic and get data connection established. To turn on your optic, plug the power adapter and one of the 6-foot USB-C cables into the nearest electric socket or power strip. Plug the other end of the USB-C cable into the left side power connection port. Wait for an orange light to turn on, signaling that the optic is now receiving power. With the other USB-C cable, plug one end into a connection port on your computer and plug the other end of the USB-C cable into the right side data connection port. I would like to take this opportunity to inform everyone that when plugging the cables in, to follow this order of operations to avoid any issues, and when turning off your optic, to reverse this order by unplugging the data cable first and then the power cable. With Lightburn open on your computer, look to see that your connection has been switched from disconnected to ready. If you do not see this, try switching the COM port in Lightburn located here in the control menu. With the optic on and connected to Lightburn, you are now set up to begin running your first projects. Remember to read our manual safety guide beforehand so you're fully versed in laser safety before operating the laser cutter. If you have any questions, please contact us here at hello at render.com and congratulations on setting up your optic portable laser cutter.